Hey, this is Mike here. It's 2023. We are well on our way to fucking this planet into a coma. It's Josh Brolin's character said in Deadpool 2. I really like that line. Uh, I've done some tree veteranization here. Uh, I've had access to this property for a few years, and one of the first things I did was start to girdle trees like you see here. I girdled this tree or ring barked it. A couple different ways to go about it. But uh, you can see I removed a layer of the of the bark, cut through the cambium layer and xylem and all that good happy horse shit. Trying to create some deadwood for all the species that rely on deadwood throughout the ages. Animals, fungus, and birds and whatnot that uh, live out their life cycle through various stages of dead and dying trees. Uh, early on here, I just really focused on creating some snags. That's why I I would have girdled this one here. I've kind of moved on to some more, more advanced, uh, advanced techniques. It takes a few years. The maples take quite a long time. This oak's starting to go. The cherries seem like they go fairly fast. Whenever you do this, you're just cutting off the the, uh, the supply of of uh, sugars. I think to the to the roots. I think I think it can still supply uh, water and things to the. To the, uh, to the branches, which is why it still leaks out. It's probably been done for a few years. I'm going to show a couple examples of this because uh, it doesn't have to just be academic papers and fancy books. I mean, any asshole like me can do it. Drinking some Lancaster, good milk stout today. See, I got a couple of holes bored in it. I was experimenting with some with a multi spur bit on a drill, trying to create some cavities for some some wildlife. All I've really seen is spiders and shit in there, but. You know what, it also allows some moisture and stuff to get in there, allows some wood rot, some good stuff going on there. So I'm going to move on and show a couple examples of this. Here's another one here close by. It's also girdled. Uh, this is a maple tree here. The last one was a red oak. Uh, you can see I kind of did a, a much wider girdle on this one. Um, the maples, they say, are a little bit harder to kill. This one here is still, still happy as hell. It's next to a nice, nice red oak there. And uh, here's a smaller maple. There's some white oaks and stuff around here. Uh, but just kind of opening up the area a little bit. You know, this whole area was forested over 100 years ago. And then uh, it's been timbered a couple of times since. Forested in hell of a fucking turn. Um, there's just an experimental cut that I was doing just trying to create some cavities and stuff. And like I said, this is kind of early on here a couple of years ago. I was just trying to create some dead wood. And now I've moved on to some more veteranization techniques that allow the tree to, to live. You know, uh, now I wouldn't uh, go do something like this because I can see a cavity down there at the very bottom opening up. And there's another one there. That would have slowly rotted and this tree would have continued to live for, for probably many, many years. Allowed some cavities to open up. So, hey, you know, live and let live. Or in this case, you know, kill it. But uh, I don't regret this particularly. Here's another one. I, I wouldn't do it this way again. It's a red oak here. It's right along the property line. But I girdled that thing. and I think it uh, hasn't succumbed yet. It hasn't succumbed yet. But uh, I think the reason I wouldn't do this now is it has that nice cavity in it. So that tree would have would have lived for some time. Might have eventually blown over. Maybe uprooted. Maybe splintered off. Got that nice cavity underneath. Again, I wouldn't do this again. But uh, you know what, it's still going to, a couple of years, it's going to create some nice dead wood for local wildlife and stuff here. So it'll serve a good purpose, but I'm a little more selective in how I go about these matters now. Here's a rather simple example of some tree veteranization. It's a pretty small, fairly young maple tree. But sometimes I just take a couple hacks into a tree because what the fuck? You know, I've got a couple of really nice larger trees around here. And I want to create some, some dead wood, some habitat for some uh, some wildlife and stuff. And one way to do that, rather than just kill the tree outright, is just injure it. Just fuck it up a little bit. Um, so in this particular case, I kind of developed this, I don't know what the hell you call it, V for veteranization. I'll cut a shallow slit into the tree, just kind of open it up a little bit, which allows some... Uh, you know, maybe some fungal spores or some bacteria, things like that, to get in there under the flesh, get past the uh, the protective layer of the outer bark of the tree, 
you know, force the tree to put up some kind of immune response and then allow any rainwater that channels off to funnel together here in kind of the upside of the tree. And then I just plunge cut down in there into the hardwood, heartwood of the tree. And, uh, you know, anytime it rains, it tends to collect some of the moisture off of that tree. And that's all the dry spores and bacteria and things like that that might blow off the wind or come down in a rainstorm. And, uh, you know, I figure it's going to tend to collect down there in the heartwood of the tree and really force the tree to put up quite a, quite a fight. Um, I suspect eventually the tree is going to succumb to, to whatever, uh, whatever attack it's under. And, uh, that's a much more complex, uh, scenario. The tree has to, to put up with that fight and, uh, and, uh, you know, it might just start to start to rot inside and it might survive. Uh, it might create some, uh, some, some, some dead wood inside. It might uh, start to rot out inside. It might create a cavity. Some animals can live in there while the tree continues to, uh, to grow around it. And, uh, you know, it might continue to live for some considerable time to come. See, I put a posted sign on that. I don't tend to like to screw or nail into trees, but, you know, this particular tree is, uh, well, somewhat sacrificial, I suppose. I, I only cut dead wood. Or, I'm sorry. I only cut green wood. I don't cut any dead wood um, for the purposes of, uh, you know, heating and whatnot. Um, you know, here's a couple of smaller trees that I cut out just to get some, some wood on the ground and get it started rotting. I have a number of examples of much larger trees that I laid down that'll uh, last quite a bit longer and probably provide some habitat for some, some animals. But, you know, even this is uh, something of a start here uh allow some rot to get up in there and uh you know i'm sure there's a number of small mammals that you know eat grubs and the grubs might eat small beetles and the beetles might eat uh fungus or eat other beetles that eat and turn eat fungus god knows what other nature is a complex bitch and we uh just keep trying to fucking kill her this here's one of my favorite trees right now the big ass black cherry they got a big split in her. It's beautiful. Fucking beautiful. This tree about half blew over. It's leaning up against that sugar maple there. And uh, I hope it holds on for some time, but eventually it's going to fall and this is going to all splinter up. But in the meantime, there's some rot setting in there. You know, that, that log even up there above, I'm sure a lot of people would love to get a hold of that and cut some boards out of it and you know, maybe one day I'll wish I had done that too, but right now, that thing's eventually going to succumb. And God knows what kind of habitat it's going to support. So I love that. And here's two more. It's a pretty large maple tree there at the edge of this meadow. All that junk there. Anyhow, here's a smaller maple in front of it. I kind of got a little happy there girdling the shit out of it. I think I couldn't quite get the whole way around it. Sometimes people do a half girdle or a three-quarter girdle or something. Really just uh, apply some injury to the tree. It'll go or it won't go, you know. It's going to fight for a while. See, I kind of got one of those groove notches I do there. Here's another one. I don't know if I plunge this one or not. Got a little happy there. Some spirals going on there. What the hell? But uh, you know these little these little side trees here. They're probably not really doing a whole hell of a lot for that that main big beautiful thing. You know, and if anything, they're they're competing a little bit because they're pretty close together. But you know, eventually those uh, those might succumb. You know, when they do, it'll probably give up a lot of those nutrients down there in the base to the main tree or. And or the surrounding ecosystem. Hell, I don't know. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. That's why we're destroying this fucking planet. There's something pretty there. It's a tulip tree. Uh, some people call it a poplar. It's Liriodendron tul tulipifera. There you go, tulipifera. But uh, it's got a little older here. I didn't do that damage. But uh, seems to be still pretty happy, but it's, it's lower bark here's rotting away. Looks like there was some stuff growing underneath the bark before it flaked off. Good shit, it's eventually gonna go. That'll snap off eventually. When it does, I'll you know push it back in the woods or something. 
I mean, if I have a, a, a sawmill, you know, there's a possibility I'll cut boards out of it. But, you know, I see something that big and beautiful. I just push her back in the woods. God knows we've taken enough. There's another simple girdle, the sugar maple, I'd say. Again, there's a, can't really see it that well in the image, but it's kind of open on that side. So I'd say that was before I knew much about veteranization other than just, just girdling. See, I left a little bit right there or else it just healed itself, which is pretty, pretty incredible. It continues to live. These sugar, or these, or these maples in general, they, they tend to want to just survive. So it went to that effort. I'm going to leave it alone. Especially considering it has that opening in it. Let it continue to do its thing. But the tree's got a bit of a lean there to it. It's reaching for the light. It's competing here. There's another maple there beside it. Pretty large cherry there. It's split into two. Looks like there's some, some rot there about halfway up on that left one. So a lot of competition here. I like to open it up a little bit. Allow things to fill in. I don't have any interest in timber in anything. I just, uh, well, this land's been fucking raped. Be satisfying to see some, some wildlife in here. Here's something a little bit different. That's a tree fall. In any kind of a climax forest or ancient forest, you're going to inevitably have tree falls. One's going to knock them over. It's going to get weak. Ground gets soft, tree starts leaning, might be on a hillside, whatever, whatever. So what you end up with is this nice pit. Eventually that, that root plate there is going to rot, going to collapse into a mound. And I gather you end up with these, uh, these pits and mounds. And it creates a little microclimate down there, it might pull water. Maybe some frogs or salamanders or something like that might lay their their eggs down in there, do their thing, complete their life cycle. Maybe that high fresh soil might support some birch saplings. I think birch tends to tends to grow on uh, on stumps and on fresh soil like that. So that's a uh, pretty supportive. So that's a that's a maple tree there. It's a pretty nice sized log. If I say so myself, but you know what behind it there was a nice nice maple tree, a couple other nice straight ones. That one had some crook to it. And uh, you know what, I just chose it to, to fall down. There's another one below it that was like the one I did b before. So how the fuck did I do that? So I got up in the tree with a extension ladder, wrapped a 3 8 cable around it as high as I could reach. And a nice long cable went down there in that meadow. Hooked it up to a 12,000 pound winch and just fucking pulled it. Start pulling it over, pulling it over, pulling it over. Here, a couple snap, crackle, pop. Eventually, the weight of the tree just brings itself right up and right down. Good shit. That milk stout's pretty good. So, uh, so this is something I like to do. I've done this a few times around here. It's a good way to remove a stump if it's in the way down there. In the, you know, the, the civilized area, whatever the fuck you want to call that. But, you know, it's in the way, but up here in the woods, I just, I follow them like this and, and leave it. This, uh, that there, I, what I might do is just, I'm cutting firewood. I do use wood to burn. I might come down here and whack it off. I might, I might hack up some of that firewood. And I might just cut it off and cut it in a couple chunks and just get it down to the ground, kind of a chop and drop scenario. Get it down. There's a pile of logs. Another pile of logs over there. Just because fuck it. Some people might call that a waste. You know, that was easy firewood. It was all cut green. Nice straight pieces there. Might even fetch a couple dollars. Hell, I don't know. But you know what? They're already starting to rot. They're starting to produce some mushrooms. I got some oysters off of uh, one log. But you know what? In a few years, start rotting down into nothing. I'd like to take a couple of these and kind of form a, a channel, almost like a, a fake hollow log. 
Because you know what? You walk around these woods, you know what you don't find? A fucking hollow log. You know, something for a skunk or a you know, porcupine or something like that to, to hide into. Because there ain't no fucking big trees. You know, the only handful of big trees you find is right there along the road or on the property line. Ones that nobody will cut. So we try to create some habitat. I ain't wasting them. I think cutting dead wood is waste. Some things I won't veteranize, though, is a butternut tree. There's only two or three of them on the property that I know of. And this one's starting to succumb to the disease. It's some kind of a canker. It ain't looking too good. But I'll open up the ground around it, the canopy and whatnot, and try to help it along. Here's some other weird shit. I'm going to end this soon because I'm going to run out of beer. That's an upside down tree. This is something that got ripped out because I was trying to make room for a building or something or other. I don't know. So I tore it out. Same method I described before for for uh, uprooting a tree. You just kind of have to rip it around a little bit. You need, you need some equipment to kind of get the roots on the one side to tear up. Anyhow, I took the backhoe and dug a hole and planted it upside down. I even added some dirt to the top and planted some sod from some various plants here in the meadow. Goldenrod, mountain mint, uh, sneeze weeds, shit like that. Uh, there's a couple of them down here in this meadow. There's one in the upper meadow. That's a tall one there. It's pretty skinny. How oh, good you can see that. Might even seen a bird just jump there. There's a... Must look like a finch. Uh, I had a pretty large one. I guess there's one sticking up right there. The ground got wet here in the fall and everything fell. At least the big ones did. I've had a big red-tailed hawk on top of one. Is there, there for... Uh, for bird habitat and just to put some snags out here in this meadow so i'm about to run out of space on my phone and out of beer you have a good one thanks for watching bye